And as a next speaker, I would like to uh, invite Ilvi, Ilvi <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ilva Wide or Vite in Swedish um, to come to the speaker desk. She's a um, project manager of the uh, Nordic Innovation um, Association, and she is um, presenting us the Lighthouse Project, Innovative Nordic Digital Solutions. Thank you. Um, Ilva Vide is my name in Swedish. Um, I'm a senior innovation advisor at Nordic Innovation, and I'm here to present uh, our light, one of our Lighthouse projects, which is uh, the Nordic Innovative Nordic Digital Solutions. Uh, so, Nordic Innovation is an organization under the uh, Nordic Ministers of Councils and supports projects and programs that stimulate innovation, improves the framework uh, conditions for Nordic markets and exports. And the goal is, to unique, uh, is a unique contribution based on Nordic added value. And the added value is synergy in cooperation, visibility and critical mass, improved cost efficiency and coordination. And Nordic innovation shall contribute to creating the Nordic region into a leading region for sustainable growth and shall work for increasing entrepreneurship, innovation, and competitiveness in the Nordic region. So we have four different uh, lighthouse projects in, under Nordic innovation, and they, they run from 2014 to 2017, so this is the last year. We have Nordic Built Cities, Innovative Nordic Welfare Solutions, Innovative Nordic Digital Solutions, and Partnership for Entrepreneurship and Financing. And I will talk about Innovative Nordic Digital Solutions, where I am the project manager. And the project's uh, goal is to meet some of tomorrow's challenges. Um, and the Nordic Ministers of Businesses and Innovation have set the ambitious goal there. Uh, of develop, developing the Nordics into a pioneering region for new and innovative digital solutions. The project aims to remove barriers to a common Nordic digital market and support development of new and innovative digital solutions that can be applied in all the Nordic countries. Uh, it shall also help to strengthen the Nordic region as a digital forerunner and prepare for the digital inner market in Europe. So in the, project, in the project, we have uh, done a mapping of the Nordic, Nordic digital landscape. We've uh, um, uh, had a vision for the Nordic digital society in 2025 developed. Uh, we continue uh, to build uh, up a Nordic network within digitalization. We've had projects on EID, uh, on smart government, and then Hack for Norden, which is a um, hackathon on open data. And what we're focusing on for the last year of the program is Smart Government 2.0, a Nordic Baltic Minister Conference on Digitalization, which is to be held in, in uh, Oslo, um, 25th of April, uh, and where a, a ministerial declaration uh, on increased cooperation will also be signed. We're also focusing on major technologi technological changes uh, and focus on artificial intelligence, internet of things, blockchains, and, and sharing economy. Uh, and the projects most relevant for this uh, conference that I will spend mo most time on is uh, uh, smart government. And I will also talk a little bit about the EID project, which is actually run by the Nordic uh, Council of Ministers. Um, both these projects uh, really capture the essence of this conference when it comes to uh, share and learn and reuse what policies other countries already have applied and proved successful, uh, with modification, of course, to apply to national conditions. So the EID project, um, the aim of this was, uh, and it ended in 2016, was to map the Nordic EID landscape and facilitate a Nordic dialogue around EID in relation to the new EU directive. And the lessons from the Nordic EID project was that national EID infrastructures are well organized, but there is a lack of Nordic interconnection. National EID assurance policies differs much, 
uh, EIDAS will not in itself lead to Nordic harmonization. So Nordic cooperation on EIDAS implementation could faci facilitate provision of cross-border digital services. All Nordic countries have a waiting room issue. The current procedures to provide uh, a PID to a foreigner is often both lengthy and paper-based. So this call for sharing of PID information across Nordic borders. And the Nordic EID inter interoperability is made difficult by lack of standards. The personal information varies from country to country. So these were the lessons for uh, EID 1.0, and now EID 2.0 is starting up to look into some specific service areas, such as health and pen pensions, where the citizens experience obstacles when moving across borders, and where there might be possibilities for Nordics to become a frontrunner in implementing cross-border EID. How do I go back? Somebody's helping me. This is very sensitive. This is why it flips all the time. <laughs> okay, so, well, the, the second um, project that I would wanted to present is the smart government. And the purpose with smart government is to evaluate the possibility for automation of reporting from private to public sector. And the vision is to establish a new digital infrastructure to enable easy sharing of data between public authorities and small and medium in enterprises. Businesses spend a lot of time and resource on reporting to different governmental agencies with demands for different formats of data at different times. And smart government is exploring the possibilities to have businesses uploading the data into a cloud where the governmental agencies can extract the data sets when they have a need for it. So the data is governed according to the highest security and privacy standards. Authorities remove the burden of creating businesses reports from the SMEs. Uh, the SMEs are only obliged to make their data available in the cloud. And this solution can also be used uh, for business-to-business -business business engagement. Uh, advisors can use the data to get informed financial advice and help the SMEs to become data-driven. Banks can issue their credit ratings based on data. Increased transparency improves the business environment in general by minimizing the risk of engaging with insolvent parties. And the project runs this year, and the final goal is to adapt the concept to different uh, individual needs within e-government and regulations to deliver a basis for decision that can map out how an implementation of smart government could be realized. Um, and the basis of the decision includes an overview of benefits to both businesses and governments, stakeholders' positions and needs, technical requirements and possibilities, as well as a test on how data may be stored and processed. And the participants in this project have, they have different responsibilities and work packages. And the first one is a business case that will is estimate costs and benefits on smart government for financial data in each Nordic country. Uh, the second one is a taste test of data warehouse solution done as a proof of concept to demonstrate different possibilities to use standard accounting database by dedicated applications. The third one is a stakeholder analysis and de development of a generic model for identifying stakeholders directly or indirectly affected by smart government and their interests. And the fourth one is technical analysis of architecture and infrastructure of financial data. So the, the project will not be building on one Nordic infrastructure. Uh, though many similarities we are in different situations and building blocks are partly defined by national features, businesses, regulations, interfaces, political vision, funding and stakeholders. Uh, so we have to leave building uh, the infrastructure for the national countries, but by collaborating on some things, we can speed up the process and we can share resources and use them more effectively. Thank you.
Thank you, Ilva, for this interesting presentation from the Scandinavian countries. So I'm very interesting, interested in speaking to you afterwards. Um,